Hi, my name is Robert Dickey, and I am a professor of public administration at Gamyeong University in Daegu, South Korea. Today, we have a special lecture, a replacement lecture, a makeup class, Korean say Bogang. And our topic is about locations and directions. Now, frankly, many English language textbooks do not do a good job of talking about locations and directions. And our current book, which is <clears throat> this one, similarly doesn't do much. You can't see this very well, but that's okay because it's just not done very well. This is page 31. Uh, but I did tell you at the time that we worked in that page that we would come back to this issue. So now we are. I should apologize for the lighting. I'm recording this class in the daytime and I have quite a severe backlighting because my back is to some windows, which makes my face kind of dark. But maybe that's okay. Maybe you don't need my face too much. There's not much uh, you will need for my face in this and for the most part uh, this video of me will be small or even moved out entirely. Okay, so uh, for those who aren't familiar with this class, English for Pub Public Administration, EPA, English for Public Administration, is a kind of class where we work on both English, particularly business English or office English, and fuse that with topics and issues in the field of public administration or how government does business. This particular lecture is a more general English issue. Locations and directions are hard. They're just hard. Um, in my own family, my father and Four of us sons are quite good at reading maps and giving locations and explaining how to go there, that is, giving directions how to go there. But my mom and three of my brothers are actually quite poor at all of that. Looking at a map, reading a map, understanding where you are, explaining, uh, understanding how to figure out where you want to go, how to go there telling other people where something is in real life or on a map that is telling people locations and explaining to people how they want to go somewhere giving directions so we will spend this class just working on that issue now if you are my student you really want to go into the CTL and uh, depending on which class you're in, might say June 4 or something else, there'll be a section that are called something like locations in the city. And it says, see the attached maps. You want to download those maps so that you can work on them uh, while you're watching the video or after if you can't. And it has some sample phrases that we'll work on. I also have those in the video. I have the PDF images in the video. But it will be very helpful for you if you download these things. And uh, just a reminder, we do have a final exam. And locations and directions, because they're hard, because I spend time on them, that makes them good test materials. So you want to practice this stuff. All right. So now we're done with the CTL. Oh, if you really want to, we could pop up and look at the, uh, I have to move this a little bit. Look at the notice board. That reminds you that there is a makeup class. This video was created to make up a class that I missed, but all it says is watch the video and first check the available pages. And if you go to the 
regular page, you will see that while I'm recording this, there is no video. But by this evening, there will be a video showing in a special section here. And if we go back a couple weeks, you will see where the videos show up. Because we had one video previously in this class, right? And uh, while we're here, I can remind you that there is a file in the notices board called prepositions of place that's useful, that can help you when you're talking about outdoors in the city. And, huh, well, it shows the slide for a video, but I don't see the video. But it must be here somewhere because it appeared there. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. I guess I'm wrong. It's not. Anyway, we'll close that. And it takes us to here. I'm going to move my face to here for now, I guess. Something like that. And uh, we start with the words for location. Okay, location means where is it? Some of these words we talked about before because we talked about locations in the city. Uh, we talked about locations indoors, in a room, or in a building. Uh, very briefly, we talked about locations on a street. We talked about the difference between across from and in front of. Remember, across from sounds like there's something between us. In front of sounds like something is blocking my view. I can't see. So we've got across from, next to, beside, near, catty corner, from. We'll talk about catty corner in a moment. Between, on the corner of, above, over, under, beneath. That was another class we did. At the end of, at the end of the street, at the end of the hall. In front of, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. And we can talk about houses on the left or buildings on the left or buildings on the right. So this uh, page, these pages actually come from an old book that I made years and years ago. So again, if you don't have this file, stop this video. It's only been seven minutes. Go back and download this and make it available in your hand. I think this file has four pages, four PDF pages. You don't have to print them out if you don't want to, but make them available to see. And ideally, you could scribble on this paper, right? You could write something here about what you see, what it is. Maybe you write a translation for it. Maybe you write a sentence for it. We're not using this paper the way this uh, book was originally designed. All right, so we've got some locations, some ways of explaining where something is. If we're looking on our campus, we might say that Old Bower Hall, Bawaguan, is across from the Social Sciences Building, Sahui Guan or Bongyong Guan. Okay, it's across from because there's that street between us. And we might say that. Bawaguan or Bower Hall is in front of Shin Bawaguan or New Bower Hall. Even though it doesn't block it completely, they kind of overlap at an angle, something like this maybe. But can't really see Shin Bower Hall, New Bower Hall from the Social Sciences Building, or at least we can't see all of it. So there's a kind of a blocking. So that sounds like it. That Old Bower Hall is in front of New Bower Hall, or New Bower Hall is behind Old Bower Hall when you are looking at it from Social Sciences Building. So that's our across from in next time. All right, so these are just basic vocabulary that we are in, uh, introducing for locations. Where is it? Lower on this page is directions. We will come back to this. Uh, my own belief is that directions are not useful if you can't tell location. 
because usually as part of our directions we include locations similarly in directions we often discuss landmarks landmarks now I mentioned landmarks before can you remember what are landmarks I'm gonna type the word out for you real quick hold on a second open up the notepad move it over move it over and just type out the word L-A-N-D-M-A-R-K-S landmarks things that mark the land things that we look at and identify and say ah that's what that is I know where that is landmarks so before we go further working on locations ah, before we go further working on locations let's take a quick look at one of the maps this map is kinda crazy this map was invented by one of my friends who is kinda crazy and we'll talk about it we'll have some fun with it but first let's go down to a rather simpler map that I stole out of a book and then we can see an even simpler map that we use for kind of a quiz we'll come back to that let's go to this simpler map I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller so that it will basically all fit in one screen there we go now I have a pen I can use, but also my mouse has a yellow beam on it or yellow halo on it, so we can work with that. This is a typical city map in a common English textbook. Before we go much further, I'm going to point out two important elements or things in this map and we need to keep these in mind to be successful in our work first at the top right of this page is a compass a compass and a compass is used to tell us what is north, what is south, what is east, what is west. Generally maps created in the United States will have north pointing to the top. Occasionally things can be different, but generally pointing to the top. So north to the sops, top, south to the bottom, east to the right, and west to the left. Of course, this only helps you when you're walking. If you point the map to the direction you want to go. If you want to walk south, well, you need to point the map north, but stand holding the map upside down, maybe, so that you can see the way you want to go. Look at the map, look at the world, the real world. Look at the map, look at the real world. So you might have to hold the paper upside down, kind of, sort of. But in general, we think that top of the map is to the north. Okay, that's the top right compass. Now on the bottom left of the compass is our starting point. It is not working, let's try again.
and you can see it says go from here so for some of the time when we're working in the map we will start from the bottom left area in the map so let's take a look at the bottom left area in the map and what do you see that is a convenient landmark what is your landmark okay now I don't want you to be too passive this is a recorded lecture but you are watching it live in your mind it's live so I want you thinking and if you can even talking let your ears hear your voice it will help you remember so what's a good landmark from the starting point well there are two things that are labeled here one is the library here we go and the other thing that's labeled here is Adams Health Club but there's another way to describe our location not using a landmark and that is using street names no, actually, in, Calif in, in Korea, not California, <laughs> in Korea, this is not very common because few people thought about locations using street names. The Sejuso system, Sejuso, or the new addressing system, which started only really in the 21st century, put a name on every street and encourage the cities to put street signs and put a number for every building based on the street name so 123 A Street would be an address because before that they used the old addressing system sometimes called the plot system or the lot system which came down from well Japan times I guess in Korea we would say from from Japan times but uh, the same system was used in China in Hong Kong and all over China so kind of an, an oriental system and it's used in the US uh, in areas where there aren't streets so that old system would just say like neighborhood lot number 87 and it didn't make any reference to a street name so but now we use street names so if we are talking about this location that we are starting from well we see that it is an intersection inter crossing intersection and we can see that one of the street names is Western Avenue Western Avenue the other street name is a little bit harder to see we have to go across a bit and then we can see it is Elm Street Elm Street Elm is the name of a tree kind of tree so we could say we are standing at the intersection at the crossing of Western Avenue and Elm Street Western Avenue and Elm Street or we could just as easily say we are standing at the intersection of Elm Street and Western Avenue Elm Street and Western Avenue okay in English there's no difference which street name comes first there's no 
priority, there's no requirement or expectation that you say one street name before the other. We don't care. You might prefer to use one street name first because it's more well known. Everybody knows Western Avenue. Or you might prefer to use the name of the street you plan to go down, you, you think is important to where you want to finish. So I'm on Western Avenue because I want to find some place on Western Avenue. But I don't know where it is compared to Elm Street. So I'm on Western Avenue starting at Elm Street. I might say I'm on Western Avenue and Elm Street. Or I might say I'm on Western Avenue at Elm Street. Or I'm on the intersection of Western Avenue and Elm Street. Or I'm at the intersection of Western Avenue and Elm Street. So remember, at is kind of a fuzzy word in English. It's a little bit less precise. On sounds like directly on, but at seems like, oh, around here somewhere, but maybe not precisely exactly a little fuzzy. So on or at will be fine. Western plus Elm or Elm plus Western will be fine. And that's my location. That's my current location. So if somebody gives me another location, and that's where I want to go, then I might say, how do I go there? How do I go? Then that will be directions. But first we're doing locations. So, maybe I'm on the phone, ring, 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 and my friend Johnny picks up and says, hey, this is Johnny. I say, yeah, this is Robert. He says, Robert, where are you? I say, Johnny, I'm at the corner of Western Avenue and Elm Street. And then my friend Johnny says, well, come on, hurry up. We're already here. We're already eating. It's delicious. Oh my gosh. So, where are you? And he says, Well, we're at the Japanese restaurant. And I say, The Japanese restaurant? Oh, sounds delicious. Where is it? And then he tells me. And he gives me a location. And then maybe I say, Oh, okay, I got it. I understand. I know how to find that. Or maybe I'll say, oh, how do I get there? Give me directions. This is not my city. So we have these two challenges, locations and directions. Okay. So let's say that our destination will be the flower shop. And the flower shop is here. Now I'm going to mark it with my pen so you can see more better. Okay? It's up here. So, Where's the flower shop? No directions, only locations. Where's the flower shop? Are you looking? Okay, so the flower shop we can see is on this area. We could say it's at the intersection or on the intersection of these two streets. So let's find the names of the streets. Well, 
if we're taking this street and we're going this way, we see, aha, it's Allen Street. Let's mark that. It's Allen Street. And we're also looking at this street and it's Eastern Avenue. You see, I can't draw straight. So now we know that the flower shop is at the intersection of Eastern Avenue and Allen Street. Can we be more exact? Can we be more precise? For example, somebody maybe is driving and they want to know which side of the street it's on. Well, you could say it's on the right side of the street. But what if you're coming from the north and you're driving south? From the north and driving south, then the flower shop would be on the left side of the street. So sometimes right side or left side is not so helpful. Maybe it's better to go back to the compass. And we could say the flower shop is on Allen Street on the... Got it? Allen Street on the... north side on the north side of Allen Street or we could say that if we're looking at Eastern Avenue it's on the eastern side of Eastern Avenue or the east side of Eastern Avenue. Or if we're talking about the intersection, lost my mouse, sometimes can't see it, then we might say that we are looking at the boom, boom, northeast corner on the intersection of Allen and Eastern Avenue, the northeast corner, northeast corner of Allen Street and Eastern Avenue, or the northeast corner of the intersection of Allen Street and Eastern Avenue, or the northeast corner of Eastern, uh, the intersection of Eastern Avenue and Allen Street. Let me show you the flower shop down you can see it the flower shop is on the north side of whatever street here it's Allen Street not Alpha Street different different city at Eastern Avenue okay so here we're talking with our main focus of Allen Street and as I mentioned before, we can talk about intersections as being on one street at another street. So the flower shop is on the north side of Allen Street at Eastern Avenue. Now, what's the problem with describing the flower shop as the northern side of Allen Street at Eastern Avenue, Eastern Avenue. What's the problem? The problem is that the real estate agent over here is also 
on the northern side of East, of Al here's Allen Street, here's the northern side, and here's Eastern Avenue. So both the real estate agent and the flower shop are on the north side of Allen Street at Eastern Avenue. So if we say the northeast corner of Allen Street at Eastern Avenue, or the northeast corner of Eastern Avenue at Allen Street, or the northeast corner on the intersection of Allen Street and Eastern Avenue, or the northeast corner on the intersection of Eastern Avenue and Allen Street, then we know it's only the flower shop. So far, okay? So, let's try another one. Here is a car showroom. Get some color in here. How about some orange this time? Woo, bright orange. Car showroom. Got it. Where's the car showroom? Use the same model that we used for the flower shop. Oops. So we could say something like the car showroom is on the north side of Allen Street. Central Avenue. Okay, if I can see that in an inch. The car showroom is on the north side of Allen Street at Central Avenue. Or the car showroom is on the northwest corner on the intersection of Central Avenue and Allen Street. Right, so which street name comes first, which street name comes second, doesn't matter. The car showroom is on the northwest corner at the intersection of Central Avenue and Allen Street. Northeast, northwest. Now, we can add landmarks or other descriptions so just a bit earlier I mentioned Japanese restaurant did you notice the Japanese restaurant on Allen Street right it's just here So we could also say the car showroom is on the northeast northwest corner the car showroom is on the northwest corner of the intersection of Central Avenue and Allen Street across from the Japanese restaurant across the street from the Japanese restaurant adding more information because 
maybe somebody doesn't really remember the intersection of Allen Street and Central Avenue. They kind of know where the Central Avenue is. They kind of know where Allen Street is. They don't really know the car room, but the Jap oh yeah, the Japanese restaurant. Yeah, 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 I know the Japanese restaurant. Okay, yeah. Across the street from the Japanese restaurant is a car show. That's right. Okay, now I got it. So adding more information to help people figure out what it is we're talking about. So far, okay. So the car showroom is on the northwest corner of the intersection of Central Avenue and Allen Street, across from the Japanese restaurant. Good. So, where's the baseball stadium? Where's the baseball stadium? So many options. So many choices. We could talk about so many places. One thing we could do is talk about the front door, the main entrance, which looks like it's probably here. So if somebody says, let's go to the ball game, I'll meet you at the main gate. And somebody says, well, I kind of know where the ball game will be, but I don't know the main gate. What could you say? Are you practicing? What could you say? Maybe you would say the main gate to the ballpark is, on, is at the intersection of Elm Street and Central Avenue. The main gate is at the intersection of Elm Street and Central Avenue. But we have another choice. Instead of talking about the intersection, the intersection, the intersection, we have another choice. What's another way we could call this? The corner. The corner. So we could say the main gate is at the corner of Elm Street and Central Avenue. Just like we said the flower shop is on the northeast of the intersection. We could say the ballpark is at the northeast corner of Elm Street and Central Avenue. And we don't need to say intersection. Of course, the benefit of corner is sometimes it's not a four-way intersection. Sometimes it's a three-way intersection. Sometimes, possibly even, it's not an intersection, just the street kind of ends and turns and goes. The street ends and turns and goes. And you might think of it as a corner, even though it's not really an intersection. So, at the corner of, at the intersection of, on the corner of, on the intersection of, at or on, don't care. Now, because this ballpark is so big, we probably don't need to say the northeast corner. Anybody can see it.
But if I'm not worried about the gate, if I'm just thinking about the ballpark as a whole, the whole place, then I might not use the idea of the corner or the intersection. And of course, some buildings are not on a corner. They're not at an intersection. They're kind of in the middle somewhere. In this case, we might use the word between. Between. So, for example, because I'm thinking of Central Avenue right now, I might say the ballpark is on Central Avenue between Elm Street and Spring Street. There's my Spring Street, there's my Elm Street, there's my Central Avenue. I could say it that way. Take a look at it this way. If we can do this. The ballpark is between Central Avenue and Eastern Avenue, between Spring Street and Elm Street. We could say that too. Okay, so just like telling time, there's not just one way to say something. And so we need to learn to understand several different ways. Because if we're talking to somebody who's not very fluent in English, they might only know one way to say it. So we need to learn several different ways of hearing it. So whichever way they say it, we understand. Okay. Again, you can't expect a native speaker to save you by telling you a different way, a different way, a different way. Because sometimes the other person is not a native speaker. In Korea, half of the people who speak English who are visiting Korea would not be considered native speakers. They're language learners too. So you have to be able to understand more than one way. So the ballpark is between Central Avenue and Eastern Avenue, between Spring Street and Elm Street, between Elm Street and Spring Street, between Eastern Avenue and Central Avenue. Doesn't matter. Anything else we want to add to that? Maybe next to the park. Mouse. Next to the next to the park. Here's the park. Here's the ball game. Here's the ballpark. Here's the maybe it's Central Park. I don't know. Central Avenue, Spring Street. Park Drive, how convenient. So the ballpark is between Central Avenue and Eastern Avenue, between Spring Street and Elm Street, next to the park. Or maybe you would say the main gate is across from the art gallery. This is an art gallery. This is a main gate. It's across from the art gallery. But in fact, it's a special kind of across. And this is one of the words we're going to introduce for you. Let's just, uh, I don't think I can do this. I have to disable this to do this. Here's a new word for you. Catty corner. Catty corner, like a cat. Meow. So think of it this way. Four corners of a box. A cat. Which I can't draw, you know that already.
If you put a cat in a box, what's the first thing it does? It tries to take the whole box. It puts its tail like this, and then they They fill the whole box. They work, wrap themselves around. Okay, but that's not what we want. We want to talk about this. Four corners. This is a corner. This is a corner. Jing, jing, jing. This is a corner. This is a corner. Jing, jing, jing. These kind of opposite corners we say is catty corner. And some people don't say catty corner. They say kitty corner. Okay, kitty is a baby cat. So catty corner or kitty corner simply means the opposite diagonal for example in an intersection the opposite diagonal so maybe the art gallery is catty corner from the main gate of the ballpark or the main gate of the ballpark is catty corner from the art gallery So far okay? So we've described the ballpark as being between two streets. Well, I'm getting thirsty. In fact, tonight, really, really, truly, truly, the night of this recording, I'm going drinking with one of my old students. That old student now works for Asiana Airlines. He's been working for them for several years. He graduated from a not famous university, less famous than Gimian Bay. But he worked hard on his English, and he studied hard, and his grades weren't the best, but he got in, and he's been flying for 10 years plus, and he's a trainer now in their school. And of course, Asiana has some troubles but that's not his fault. And he's paid well. So he and I are going drinking tonight. Probably we're going to have some gipsal and craft beer. You know, IPA and stuff like that. I'm looking forward to that. In this map, the bar is on Western Avenue. Can you find the bar, the pub, the bar, B-A-R? Well, if you start down here at the bottom and you work your way up the street, you'll find it. Where's the bar? Now, tell me, tell yourself, where's the bar? No directions, just location. Okay, so probably you want to say something like the bar is on Western Avenue between Park Avenue, where's my Park Avenue, and Allen Street. Bing. And maybe even then you could say across from Tracy's Karate School. The bar is on Western Avenue between Park Drive and Allen Street across from Tracy's Karate School. So that's good. We can go play karate, get thirsty and tired and lose our weight and then go to the bar and drink and drink and drink and gain our weight back. You know I'm on a diet. I'm doing good. 
All right. So the bar is on Western Avenue between Park Drive and Allen Street. The bar is on Western Avenue between Allen Street and Park Drive. Doesn't matter. Oh, but did we forget something? Maybe we want to say the bar is on the east side of Western Avenue between Park Drive and Allen Street, across from Tracy's Karate School. Maybe. More information can be more helpful. The bar is on the east side of Western Avenue between Park Drive and Allen Street. So far okay? So let's take another look. Here is Shelley's Dance School. If you move this over there out of the way, it will bother you less. Shelley's Dance School. Where is it? Shelley's Dance School is on Spring Street between Central Avenue and Western Avenue. Okay, if you want to, you could say Shelley's Dance Studio is on the south side of Spring Street between Central Avenue and Western Avenue. And maybe across from the drugstore Maybe next to the music store. Something like that. Okay. Pop back over here again. I oh, need to disable that. Pop back over here. Come on. So we saw the phrase is something like the flower shop is on the north side of Allen Street at Eastern Avenue, or the flower shop is, we're gonna fix this. The flower, I can't type, it's beginning old. It is on the northeast corner of the intersection of Allen Street at EAST Avenue. Come on. Across from the real estate agent. By the way, real estate agent, Budong San, right? All right, we're gonna move this over some more. We got lots of room. And maybe even add more, 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 more information. Caddy corner from the sky. 
diner. Maybe and across from Jake's auto shop. Those are all possible. The flower shop is on the northeast corner of the intersection. Or maybe change of here to add if you want. Of Allen Street at Eastern Avenue, across from the real estate agent, catty corner from the Skyline Diner, and across from Jake's Auto Shop. Something. Got lots of choices. So if we look down here a little bit more, we'll see that an ideal, uh, a best kind of location is adding three pieces of information. Now here I said three landmarks because sometimes we don't have a lot of good information. But we're always trying to help people find three things they can think about. For example, the west side of A Street next to something else. Or maybe between two things. Or at the corner of something at the intersection of. We're always trying to give three pieces of information. So if I tell somebody uh, the bank is at 138 Main Street, and they go, where's that? 138 Main Street. Ah, it's between A Boulevard and B Boulevard. Boulevard means kind of a big road. 138 Main Street between A Boulevard and B Boulevard. Uh, yeah, okay. Between, so it could be anywhere between. It might actually be on an intersection, but probably not. Because if it was on the intersection, I would say that. If it was on the corner, I would say that. So probably it's somewhere between. So maybe I'll say 138 Main Street is on the west side of Main Street between A Boulevard and B Boulevard across from the theater. Ah, okay. Lots of information. I can do this. Okay. That's the kind of information you're going to want when you are giving locations. We can play with this map all day. It's a great thing to practice on because it has lots of pieces of information for locations. And this map, which we don't actually have time to work on, was created by my crazy friend and you can look at it and find things like bakery and deli, AM PM, which is a convenience store, dorm, Kisuksa, right? Park, baseball stadium, donut shop, movie theater, police station, lots of things in here we could play with. It's just a practice sheet. I'm not testing you on it. Let's go back up because we are now pretty close to 60 minutes in what should be a 70 minute video. Take a look at directions. Directions, how to go. Okay, we did a little bit of this in the book back uh, a few weeks ago. Turn left, turn right, go up the street, go down the street, go up the hall, go down the hall. Up and down maybe means the road is not level, there's a hill and you go up the hill and down the hill, of course. But if there's no hill, if we're looking at a map, go up seems like go up the page, right? Go down seems like go down the page if there's a map. If there's no map and we're just talking, up and down doesn't mean anything. It just means go. And so some people will say go up or go down a lot. Some people will usually say go up. Some people will usually say, go down. Other people don't use it. They just say, go. So go up the street, go down the street, 
up and down maybe doesn't mean anything. Maybe it means, I'm thinking on the map, go up the paper, down the paper. And maybe it means there's a hill. Okay. Go straight. Go straight for how many blocks? We're going to talk about blocks in just a minute. Now in Korea, people often say go straight, but the road's not straight. So if the road is not straight, often in the West we might say follow the road. Did you see uh, Dorothy going down the yellow brick road in The Wizard of Oz? Follow the road. Follow the yellow brick road. Wherever it goes, just keep following it. Follow the road. That means it's not straight. It turns. Cross A Street. It means we're going to keep going, but I'm giving you a landmark so you feel comfortable. You know you're not lost because I said go, uh, go across C Street. Oh, there's C Street. He said cross it. Okay, keep going, keep going. Go past the bank. Ah, oh, there's the bank. Okay, keep going, keep going. So follow the road, cross some street, go past some street. These are just ways to help you know you're going the right way. Go to the second intersection. Go to the third intersection. And maybe that is the intersection where the business is. Or maybe at this intersection you're going to turn right or turn left, right? Go to the second intersection and turn right. As you're walking, you know, going to the bank, they'll say, oh, because you're walking, I'm giving you directions, the bank will be on your left. So 138 Main Street, the bank, the bank is on your left. Or it's on the north side of the street. Now, some people are not good with north and south and east and west. Me, in US, perfect. In Korea, I'm always a little confused. I have to think about, oh, where's the north? My, my, my bird intuition, you know, birds know how to fly north and fly south. Well, my bird intuition is off a little bit in Korea. About 45 degrees off. What I think should be north is not north. It's very frustrating for me because I'm really good in U.S. So I think it's the, the magnetic north, you know. The compass is a little bit wrong. Depends on where you are. Well, in Korea, we're off by this much more, maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe it's, maybe it's my bird brain. Anyway, so here we've got some simple phrases to give directions. So we could go back, and we could play on this page, but it's a little bit harder because you see many of the streets are not quite straight. Or we can go down to this one where most of the streets are safe. Most of the streets are straight. So if I am starting in our official starting place, and I want to go to the flower shop, which we know is here. It's almost cut off. Let me clear this, move this down one notch. Click, click. Now, turn it back on. We're starting here, and we want to end up here. Don't forget our compass. To give directions, well, we have some different ways we could go. We could go up and then over. We could go over and then up. We could go confused way. We could go in circles just for fun. Nah, don't do that. Give directions from our starting point near the library to the flower shop. I'll wait, you try.
Okay. So one word I introduced very quickly before, I said we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it now. The word is block. So block means square. For example, children play with blocks and they build their house or whatever. Could be a Lego or it could just be a wooden kind of cube. So they could be square, they, you know, like a cube, or they could be kind of long, like a rectangle, but they basically have straight sides, four straight sides. So when we talk about a block for streets, we're talking about an area with four straight sides. But actually, when we are counting blocks to walk down the street, we don't care about that fourth side, that hidden side. We only care about the side we're walking on, this side, this bit. So if I am walking, please stop, from here to there, and I want to go on Western Avenue, I might do something like this. Well, that's interesting. Try that again. Why is it doing that? I don't know. We'll do it with the pen. We might think about this. One, two, three, that's one block. All right? One. Oh, come on. This is making me crazy. One, two, three. So this is one block. From here to here is one block. And then from here to here is one block. And then from here to here is one block. One, two, three. So I could say, go up Western Avenue three blocks. Where's my mouse? One, two, three. Go up Western Avenue three blocks to Allen Street. Aha, uh -huh, landmark, thank you. And turn right. So let's go up. Please. Sometimes I hate computers. Go up Western Avenue, one block, two block, three block, and turn right. Now, there's nothing really famous here to look at to give me confidence. But I could say, go past the hotel, go past Tracy's Karate School. Right. Three blocks and turn right. Then go two blocks east on Allen Street to Eastern Avenue. Go. Turn right, go east on Allen Street, two blocks to Eastern Avenue. You'll see the real estate agent. The flower shop is on the northeast corner of Allen Street at Eastern Avenue. Go up three blocks, turn right. So what are some landmarks we could do? Well, if we went a different way, we would see a lot more landmarks. We could say, oh, from the library? Go east on Elm Street, two blocks, past the stadium, ta-da, and turn left at Eastern Avenue. 
Go up Eastern Avenue three blocks past the park. Right. Go up three blocks past the park to Allen Street. The flower shop is on your right just after Allen Street. Something like that. The flower shop is on Allen Street, or is on Eastern Avenue just past Allen Street. Or you could say the flower shop is on Allen Street just to the right of Eastern Avenue. Something like that. The flower shop is on the northeast corner of Allen Street and Eastern Avenue. So this way, Going this way, we see more landmarks. Easy things to see that everyone will recognize. Ballpark, the park. Um, maybe the Chinese restaurant is easy for people to know. Something, landmarks should be easy to see, easy to recognize. Okay. We're now at 70 minutes, which is basically our class time. And we've talked about this. Now, the last slide in this file, and this is an old file. Okay, this is not something I made for this class. This is something I made for a book a long time ago. Is a kind of a quiz. And I want to encourage you to try this quiz. Okay, but it's not graded. There's no bonus points, sorry. No bonus points. And it's challenging. Oh, goodness, my computer wants to play. It's challenging, and it is possible to argue a different answer. Um, I mean, it's not quite a perfect quiz. The daycare center is between the hospital and the bank. Okay, we know where the bank is, right? And so the daycare center is between the hospital and the bank. So now we know where the daycare center is and we know where the bank is. Then it says the DMV. The DMV means Department of Motor Vehicles. It's the place you go to get your driver's license. It's the place to register when you buy a car or sell a car. If you don't buy it from a car dealer. If you have to register yourself. Things like that. So the DMV is across from the hospital and it's on the corner of Main Street and Post. So we know where the DMV must be. The courthouse is between the DMV and the library. Now this one's a little hard. Okay, this one's a little hard because we can see there is more than one possible. Just to give you an example, if this is building A and this is building Z, well, number one and number two, both of these are between A and Z. Okay. Both are between A and Z. So it's a little bit challenging. All right. So at this point, I am done with our lesson. Be sure to watch this. Tell your friends to watch this before next week, Friday, because I have to take attendance. Thank you very much. I'll see you in class. Take care. Bye-bye.